to touch some points that are for sure familiar to everyone. I started talking yesterday in another class about that issue and Hashem Barach helped me to understand something very big, very important today. Yesterday I mentioned in the class that a person has got two ways of thinking. One way is a positive way. That is the good thoughts, the positive thoughts, the hope that he's got, the will to build himself, to come closer to Hashem. That's a way of thinking that the person is using while he's alive, while he's thinking. The other way is a negative way of thinking. That's the foreign thoughts, the despair, the sadness, the frustrations, the confusions, all of the bad self-image. The person feels so lost. Who am I? I'm not going to make it. I'm not able to do that. They cannot succeed. I don't have a chance. I don't have the tools. I don't have the power. So, today Hashem Bach really opened my eyes and let me see something very, very important. When we sinned in Etzadat, when we ate from that fruit that was not allowed for us to eat, so actually we chose to distract our thoughts from the will of the Creator. That's what we did. He told us, don't eat, and we chose to look, to open our eyes, and to think on our own. And we listened to the voice of the snake, and we followed his advice. So, basically, after doing that, we stuck ourselves in that situation. And we are still stuck walking, going in circles and circles and circles, again and again, to the sa in the same pattern, to the same place, that we have two options. To listen to the inner voice, the voice of our soul, our self-confidence, our faith in ourselves, to have hope, to believe Hashem he loves me, Hashem he knows what He's doing with me, and to try to connect ourselves to Him. That's one way. And we always have the second option. The second option is the snake. And the snake, and that is that huge realization, understanding that Hashem helped me and opened my eyes. Sometimes you can understand how important it is to have a house, even that after living in that house for 20 years. But only after 20 years you came to that understanding how important it is to be married, to, to that she is your wife, that he is your husband. It, sometimes, even to understand things that you already know, it takes time, but it brings you to that place that you grab things in a deeper way. You achieve, understand things in a deeper meaning. So, today Hashem Bar helped me to understand that the evil inclination does not have no power to affect our life at all. Just, it got the permission to speak to us in our thoughts and to present a second option, a negative point of view on life. And we have the power to buy it or to reject it or to fight with it or to listen and to follow after the advice of the snake, or not to, and to count on Hashem, and to listen to ourselves, to, the, to our understanding, to our knowledge, and to follow the truth, and to fight with that voice. In the end of the day, all of the destruction, and all of the horrible things, all the darkness that today, that is such a thick darkness that exists today in the world, been made by human beings, by the people themselves, not by the devil, not by the snake. What the Yetzirah did, 
He came to the thoughts of people and pushed them and pushed them. He didn't touch them. He just offered and offered. He just suggested and suggested. He just gave them another opportunity to choose wrong, and they did. And then he's sitting from the side and laughing. Look at him, look at that fool, look at that stupid person, and look what he did. And he's making fun of us because the free choice is in our hand and not in his hand. The Yetzirah, the evil inclination, don't have the power to push you to sin. It just can offer you to fall to sadness. Oh, you don't have hope. To lose hope. To doubt Hashem. Not to count on Hashem. He can only offer those things to you. He cannot show you that there is no Hashem. He can just offer to you that opportunity, that, that, uh, uh, that, that option, that God does not exist, that the Torah is not right, that, 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 that you are worthless, that you're hopeless, that you're never going to make it. And He's bringing evidence. But it's all false. It's all lies. And it's in our hands to choose right, to fight against the evil inclination, and then in that moment we're facing Hashem. And when you're facing Hashem and you're calling Hashem, Hashem has got a covenant with you. He's got an agreement that He cannot move from that agreement. And that is the blessing and that is the curse. You can be blessed by following Hashem and then for sure you will be answered 100% only because that you learned how to play the game. And you joined Hashem and you're with Him and He must answer you because that's His will. And He will. And He will reveal Himself. But, and there is a big, big, big thing, a big but here, what? That there is one person that is missing in all of that mystery. And that's the one that will have a complete confidence. We can all do the best that we can, but not all of us are able to achieve what that Mashiach will achieve. We must have Mashiach. We must have Mashiach to come and to open the path for us, to show us the way and to lead us and to guide us we must find that person that he has got the self-faith in himself in a, in a way that is beyond our understanding and he will show to us, will be a life example, a role model for us to follow him. We must find that person. That person must reveal himself to us. Now, what's the trigger? What's the problem? That, okay, if there is a person like that, that he's so strong and powerful, so why he's not jumping? Why he's not coming? Okay, we need you, so come if you're so powerful, so join us. The thing is that he's going through a test that is also so much harder than our test. Why? Because when you need to believe in yourself, so what you need to believe that you're able to, to do, to be, who that you are. Great, so it's amazing, it's a big challenge for you. If you really want to sing, and that's your desire, and that's your talent, and that's your will, and you're now working as an accountant in a law office, uh, and, 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 and you don't know how to connect between this to that, and okay, so it's a huge distance for you to cross. Okay, it's a big mission. I understand it's hard for you. But think about Mashiach. When Mashiach needs to believe in himself, he needs to believe that he's Mashiach. Can you understand how hard it is for a person like us to believe that he is Mashiach? Like, okay, you need to believe in yourself and to become a musician. Great, and how hard it is for you. Almost impossible for you to become that musician. Because you have so many difficulties. And Mashiach is dealing with the same situation exactly. He needs to believe in himself that he is Mashiach. You know how hard it is to believe that you have the power to redeem the world? Like... Moshe Rabbeinu, when Hashem Barak called him and told him, listen, in the burning bush, in the prophecy, first prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem called him and he saw Hashem 
And Hashem separated Moshe's soul from his body, and he went up to the world. It's written in the Zohar Kadosh, a whole long description of what had happened, how Hashem removed Moshe's body from him and took him back to heaven, to a holy place. And over there he could see everything, and he saw Hashem, and he saw everything. And in that situation, Hashem is telling him, okay, you are the Mashiach, you are the one that's going to redeem my children out of Egypt. And Moshe Rabbeinu is arguing with him for a whole week, seven days and seven nights, arguing with Hashem, bringing proofs and evidence for why he is not the right one for the job. And bringing proofs that Hashem cannot answer. And Hashem is trying to answer and Moshe brings another evidence. Then Hashem is answering and Moshe brings another evidence. Seven days and seven nights until Hashem told him, listen, I already took that decision, it's your job, go to work. So Moshe went. But not because he found out that really it's him, he didn't have a choice. Today, when Hashem is hiding his face from us, and we cannot experience that prophecy, people are not seeing those visions in front of their eyes, so a person needs to go through a test that is much harder than the test of those prophets. Because those prophets, suddenly they saw something, but us, we must go through the darkness. And to believe in Hashem in Barach, in the darkness, without those visions, without those lights, without those amazing spiritual experiences. So Mashiach, in our generation, need to believe in himself that he is Mashiach, even though that when he's looking at himself, he sees, okay, I'm crazy. I'm just a crazy person. That's what he feels about himself. Why? Because he's humble. So as a humble person, he cannot even relate to the idea that he might be Mashiach. It's the farthest thing for him in the world. So, what are we going to do? We need to pray for Mashiach. Not for Mashiach to come. For Mashiach to succeed. That Mashiach will find his way out from his own prison. We need to pray for him. He's our friend, he's our best friend, he's our rabbi, he's our teacher, he's the light in front of the camp, so we must, we must pray for Mashiach, okay? So now we're going to dedicate 20 seconds to pray for Mashiach. Everyone will say a few words to Olam. Help Mashiach to be happy, to find the path into the hearts of all of our nation, into the hearts of all of the believers. That everyone will find the point of Mashiach in their own hearts and will love him and will follow him with a happy heart and a wishing soul. Amen. And from that situation, from that understanding, we can learn for ourselves. The main test of a person is to believe in himself. And I'll tell you a story. One time Rabbi Nachman of Westlev, one of the biggest righteous people that ever been in on walking on earth that holy man one time felt horrible with himself he had a very very big challenge in front of him spiritually he was going through a very embarrassing situation with himself something in his mind something that i don't know but rabbi nachman is writing and telling that story about himself that he had a very hard time and then while he is in that despair, while he, he was in that darkness, he started thinking to himself that he learned that everything that a person is going through in his lifetime is actually a message from Hashem, from the Shekinah Dosha, And Hashem is trying to tell him something. And every person is a mirror of the wide world. Everyone is representing the world in a way. And Hashem Barach is showing to you, teaching you, how to connect through your own life situations to Him, to Hashem. So Hashem, for an example, when He, Hashem Barach, got a certain will, so He's waking you up, to understand that thing by causing you a similar situation in your life that will wake you up to think about Him. So, for an example, if Hashem in Barach now doesn't have a house because the temple been destroyed, been ruined, so now He is causing for us 
so many problems with the holy land, with the holy city, with the holy mountain, with our own houses, our apartments, to buy a house, to pay the mortgage, to rent a place, to find the right place, and all of the problems that we have with housing, with houses, supposed to wake us up to understand the sorrow of the Shekhinah Kedoshah, the sorrow of Hashem. And he's using our Shlom Bayit, the peace in the house, the relationship with the children, to open our eyes to pull us, to bring us back to his will, that we're going to understand what he wants from us. So Rabbi Nachman of Wesner was sitting in his spiritual darkness, thinking to himself that whatever that he is going through now in life is actually a message that Hashem, the Shekhinah Dosha, is sharing with him, with Rabbi Nachman himself, his own lackings. Hashem's lacking, so to speak. Hashem is showing to him his own sorrow by causing problem in his life. To wake him up to understand that Hashem in Barach needs something from him to do. And then he had that thought. Who am I that Hashem in Barach will choose me to tell me his heart? To share his sorrow with me? Is there in the world a greater honor than that? That Hashem will choose me as a friend? To share with me his pain, his sorrow? Is there something greater than that? And from that thought, he came to a huge happiness. He became so happy that Hashem Ibarach chose him to be his friend. And us, when we are finding ourselves in that situation, that we are far from free, that we don't believe in ourselves, that we cannot understand our own power, that we don't know who we are, that we don't understand the purpose of our lives, that we don't have the parnasah, the money, the shepherd, the bounty, that we don't know how to make peace in our own houses, that we don't have a clue how to educate our children, that we don't know how to learn to Torah. All of those things are waking us up to understand that Hashem Barach is our best friend and he's just sharing with us his pain and his sorrow because he feels the same sorrow that we feel because he feels the same pain that we feel when we've been exiled the Shekhinah been exiled with us Hashem Barach went out from his palace went out from his place where he went to? to a hidden place Bamistarim Tifken Afshin he's crying because of the arrogant because of those curtains that are blocking the eyes of people from seeing Hashem. But like we said before, it is in our hands. We have the free choice, the power to choose in, is in our hand. And we must choose to believe in Hashem. If you follow the advice of the snake and you forget about Hashem and you start following your sadnesses, and your angers, and your desires, and your lusts, and all of the craziness that confusing you, your doubts, your lack of confidence, all of your fears and anxieties, and you follow them, so what will happen to that person? He will find himself sick, and suffer, and poor, no money, no happiness, no peace in his house, no educated children, cannot learn Torah, running from one place to the other, losing his mind. Why? Because he is following the advice of the snake, dropping the self-esteem, the belief in himself, his real connection to Hashem, the real spiritual connection that he's got from inside, his connection to the roots, to faith, to Hashem Barach himself. He's choosing not to believe, so he's following idols, and he's idolizing rich people, and he gives honor and respect to sport, uh, to, to athletes, to, 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 to rich people, to, to, to singers, to models, to whoever. Why? Because he lost the connection to the truth. So now, when you want to reconnect yourself to Hashem, what you need to do, you need to look inside, to do something 
that is opposite to what the snake is offering to you. Think what the snake is offering people. To one person, he is like opening his eyes, opening her eyes, and the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, is taking that person and telling him what? Hey, you must be rich like that person. You must be beautiful like that supermodel. You need to be a genius like that holy rabbi. You need to have an, a house like those people across the street. And to everyone, he brings an idea to his mind that will make him crazy to try to satisfy himself and to find the answer in other people's backyards, in other people's cars, in other people's shapes and figures. And it's a dead end because there is no way in the world that you can become someone else. So the snake is coming to us and giving to us an advice that is the only advice that will never work. He's telling you, be like him, be like her, be like him, be like him. You need to have this, that. All of those things that you see outside are not you. The only thing that is impossible for the person to be is someone else. Try to be me. There is no way. You must be yourself. You will always be yourself. There is nothing in the world that you can do to be me. That's the only thing that you cannot do is to be someone else. And that's the advice of the Yetzirah to the person. You must do this. You must compare yourself to him, to her. You have to achieve this and that. And we are following that advice. And by trying to follow that advice, we are losing the connection to the truth. What is the connection to the truth? Pnimiut, to go inside. And then when you're going to go into your true self, what you're going to find over there? Your soul that is godly, that it's chelak elok amimal, part of heaven. You found your connection to the Creator by finding your true self. And you became yourself. And when you became yourself, you became one with Hashem. And all of your prayers are being answered. And you're happy. And you're calm. And you're righteous. And you have the blessing in your house. And everyone are happy around you. It's good for you to be righteous. And good to your neighbors that you're righteous. And the blessing is hovering above you. And all of your words are words of blessing. And you're positive, And you're bringing redemption to the world. It depends in your mindset. And every one of us got the power to bring that blessing into his house. And Mashiach got the power to bring the blessing to the wide world. He can reveal to us a way how to do it on our own. By showing to us a model, a way how to find your true self. And not how to imitate him and to follow him and to become like him. No, so now thousands will want to be Mashiach. No, there's only one Mashiach. And we should learn from him how to become ourselves. And think again about that challenge that he's facing. He needs to believe in himself that he is Mashiach. It's crazy. Can you believe in yourself that you are Mashiach? Can you really, with all of your mistakes, with all of your doubts, with all of your downs, with all of your weaknesses, now try to think about it and say to yourself, maybe I am a Mashiach. No way! There's no way in the world that I am a Mashiach. 100% that I am not Mashiach. Why? Because I know myself, how far I am from holiness, from purity, from wisdom, from, from humility. I cannot be a Mashiach. Okay, great. Now Mashiach is even more humble than me, and Mashiach for sure! He doesn't have no doubt about the fact that he knows 100% that he cannot be Mashiach. There's no way that he will be Mashiach. He's like Moshe. Like that for Moshe it was impossible for him to believe that he is the one that is about to redeem our nation. Also for Mashiach today it's impossible. He looks at himself and says, no way. It's for sure not me. Oh, it can be you, it can be you, it can be him. Me for sure not. That's Mashiach. So we need to pray for Mashiach, <laughs> for him to find that. And I'll tell you another thing that is a little bit even deeper than that. That those lackings that we have, like we said now, that's Torah and Rabbi Nachman of Breslau. 
Hashem Yitbarach Himself is telling us His heart. When we're experiencing our lackings in life, by that we can learn about the so-called lackings of the kingship in heaven, of Hashem Yitbarach Himself, of the Creator Himself. So, in the prayer, what are we doing all of the time? We're telling Hashem Yitbarach all the time, we're reminding Him, Hashem, you are healing all of the sick. Hashem, you are the one that can open your hands and to feed us and to give, to supply all the parnasah that we need, all the money that we need. Hashem, the key of life, the key of, of, of freedom, the key of rain, everything is in your hands. Why do we need to tell Him that? Why are we always reminding Hashem in Barach His greatness? Why are we praising Him? Because Hashem in Barach, because of the exile, because of the huge war that happened, because of the darkness that fell to the world, Hashem Yitbarach Himself, and I know that you can find my words now hard to understand. And if not you, so there will be many rabbis that will find my words hard to understand. But I don't mind. Hashem Yitbarach Himself came to that place, and that is what that He is showing to us, that He Himself even though that he is so great, he cannot believe in himself. His faith in himself is weak. He needs to receive from us chizuk. Hashem Yitbarach wants us to tell him that he can do it. He needs to hear us calling him and praising him and thanking him and asking him to do it that His mercy will wake up because they're asleep now. Because He, after the exile, and after seeing all of the sorrow, and all the bloodshed, and all the tears, and all the screamings, Tash Kochokim Keva, it's written. He lost His power in a way. And He needs Havu Godel Elokenu. He needs us, Nuaz Elokenu. He needs us to give Him power. How are we going to give Him power? By believing in Him. When you believe in your friend, you tell him, I believe in you. You can do it. You are giving Him, you're strengthening Him. You give Him power to go and do it. Now He will base His faith on your faith and He will have twice as much as He had before. And He will go with your words of encouragement to make the change in His life because of your positive words. And that's exactly what is it happening right now with Hashem. That when we are telling Hashem, Hashem, I believe in you, and people are crowning Hashem, and accepting on themselves the yoke of heaven, we are bringing back the kingship of heaven to the king. We're bringing the crown back to the king because the crown fell, because the kingship didn't destroy, because Hashem it barach self-confidence, so to speak. And we must be very careful because we are talking about king of all kings. But... He himself went into the darkness of exile and he is, is in huge sorrow and pain. And he's crying on the destruction of Beit HaMikdash and on his children that have been killed and all the sorrow and on the fact that he made that thing, that so-called mistake and exiled his children. Oy lo le'av she'gla'et banav, uma lo le'av she'gla'et banav. He's crying. And he's crying and his tears are falling to the ocean, to the large sea. And he's crying. And the Shekhinah Dosha is refusing to receive his, his promises. And he's telling her, don't worry, my daughter. I'm going to redeem you. I'm going to save you. You're going to see one day. And she's saying, the Shekhinah is fighting with Kudsha Berichu. She's fighting with him, with the Creator himself, on the children that are in the exile. And she's saying, until you're going to redeem them, them, I'm not listening to your promises. I'm not following you anymore. Until you're going to build your house, I'm not. And she's saying, Kalani Meroshi, Kalani Mizroi. He's cursing my head. He's cursing my hands. She's screaming on her husband. There is a huge argument in heaven between Kut Shabrichu and Shrinte. She went 
And it's written in Tana the Biliao, the books that we written by Eliyahu and Avi, Elijah the prophet. And it's written over there that the Kadosh Baruch Hu, he is like a husband that divorced his wife and children and exiled them. And every year he is going to that, that crossroad intersection and in that place he's mourning and he's crying how could I send them how could I make that mistake and he regrets and he's asking kapara. you need to atone for me you need to bring a sacrifice for me and it's written only there's gonna be one wise person that will have the power to atone for that oath of Hashem to that word that came out of the mouth of Hashem Barach and exiled and destroyed the world in a way. And we are all waiting for that wise person to come and to atone to Hashem, to cancel that oath that Hashem Barach made. Because a person that makes an oath cannot cancel that oath. He needs a wise person to come to find a way to break that vow, to break it to cancel that oath, to show you that you took that oath in time of crisis, in time that you were not thinking right. You need to have a very wise person to untie that oath of Hashem. That's Mashiach. And Mashiach will find a way to untie, to cancel that oath, and to set Hashem in Barach free from that decree that he decreed on himself and on his children and on his so-called wife, Shrina Akdosha, and to bring all of our nation and all of the believers back to Zion and to come and to see the Beit HaMikdash being rebuilt. All of those things are things that will happen in our days. Just we need to believe in ourselves and to push our friends to believe in themselves. And by believing yourself, you will have the power to give the same inspiration to your friends. And then the friends will give the same inspiration to their friends. And then that light will hit Mashiach in the end. And Mashiach will realize that he is Mashiach and that he needs to go and do his thing. And he's not going to do a big thing. He will just going to be honest enough to pray with the confidence that Hashem will listen to him. Because as of today, he doesn't believe that Hashem Barak will answer his prayers because he doesn't believe that he is Mashiach. But he's got the promise that Hashem told him, whatever you're going to ask, I'm going to answer. The problem is that Mashiach is not praying. Mashiach is not Messiah. He's not talking. He lost his words. Why? Because he lost his faith in himself. So he cannot talk. He lost his faith in himself. And like I said, I know it can be sound hard. You don't have to accept my words. That's my understanding. That is what the Hashem Barach is opening my eyes to see. Because when Hashem Barach is showing to you that something is lacking in the world, it's coming to wake you up to understand a message, something about kingship of heaven. Because Malchuta de Ar'ak and Malchuta Dirkia, because the kingship of this world is similar to the kingship of heaven. And Hashem Barach is showing to us through the world what actually happens in the world to come, in the world of above, the world of beyond. And we need to understand that things that are happening to us in our life are representing something, are very meaningful, are very powerful. And we just need to go all the way with our understanding, with the messages that Hashem Barach is hinting and giving to us and to follow that, and to become your true self, and not to follow other people, and not to follow people, and not to think that other people can satisfy you, and if you will achieve something and, and, and get something, you will be satisfied. You can never find satisfaction from this physical world. Nothing in this world can ease your pain and your sorrow. You will yearn for a house for a whole year and in the end you'll get that house and I promise to you, you'll have so many issues and so many problems and that house will drain you. It will take all of your power. You wish to get married and after you get married suddenly you have so many more issues. You hope to have a child and that baby is bringing with himself so many difficulties. And we're not saying that it's wrong. But that is not the answer. 
The answer is not to have a house, to get a wife, to have children. That's not going to answer your thirst. Your inner lacking will be fulfilled only in a spiritual way. Only when you're going to connect yourself to your spiritual root, to Hashem, to the Creator, when He will show you, will uncover His smiling face, then you will be happy with a wife, without a wife, with children, without children, with a husband, without a husband, with a house, without a house, with money, without money. You will be happy. Why? Because you have Hashem with you. When you have faith, you not lack of all of those things that the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, is showing to you, pretending for you, talking to you, his Lashon Ara, his bad words, let you feel like you're so empty and you lack of a house and you lack of a BMW and you lack of a beautiful bride and you lack of a million dollars and you lack of being righteous and finishing all shas. All of those things, no matter what, if it's lusts, or if it's desires, or even if it's fantastic dreams that looks to you like they're the goal and the purpose of life, if it's not the real will of Hashem from you, so it's a lie. Yetzirah, the evil inclination, he doesn't care from which cliff to push the person to his death. If it's through the left side or through the right side. If a person now wakes up to do tshuva and he wants to come closer to Hashem, Yetzirah, for him it's a joke. He's saying, no problem. No problem. I'll make you religious. I'm going to make you from. I'm going to make you Haredi. And I'm going to take all of your happiness away from you. You're going to be stuck in that poverty, in that poor neighborhood. You're going to lose your connection to your friends. You're not going to be around your family anymore. You won't have money. You will be stuck. And after two, three years of excitement, you're going to divorce your wife. You're not going to be... Yetzirah doesn't care. He makes a joke out of us. In every situation, he, it's for him, it's a joke. You say, I want to learn Torah. He says, yes, you must learn Torah. You must learn Torah. And you say, okay, great. Today I learned three pages of Gemara. And he's showing you some of Rech that sits aside and finish seven pages of Gemara. And he tells you, you, you haven't even learned half of what the teach you. And now you're losing your mind. Instead of being happy on three pages that you achieved today, that they are in your pocket, he's showing to you someone that finished seven pages before of Mincha, and you're going to be jealous, and you're going to be upset on your wife. Why she's calling in the middle of the limud? Why she's interrupting? Why I cannot learn? Why my wife cannot be like his wife? And you start comparing. And you're losing the peace in the house, and you're losing the blessing, and then you, in the end, won't be able even to focus on those three pages. And it was better for you to learn one page with happiness and with joy, and to continue like that for the rest of your life, than to desire seven pages a day with Rashi and Tosfot and Ran and Rif and Ritva and Maharsha, and you must have time to learn Shnai Mikra Bechat Targum, and you have to have Seder in Pirkei Avot, and you must learn Mishnayot by heart, and also Shulchan Aruch, and too, because if you're not connecting the Halakha to the Limud of the Gemara, so it's like you haven't learned the Sugiya at all, so it's an empty Limud, okay, and he's going to make you crazy, because you haven't finished the Tehilim this week, and three prayers in a Minyan, and Tikkun Chatzot, and you must wake up before dawn, and you must go to the Mikveh before of Shacharit. So you're done. And who did it to you? Your thoughts that are chasing you, that are killing you and destroying you, and take the happiness from your life, even that you live inside of a holy place and you can serve and you can keep and you can achieve and you can do, and you do, and you are. But the negative thoughts are eating your mind, eating your brain and, and killing and destroying. But... Like we said before, it is in your hand to choose if to follow the advice of the evil inclination and always to be frustrated and angry and upset and, 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 and arrogant and thinking and desiring and looking outside and comparing yourself to other people, dreaming to achieve the only thing that is impossible for you to achieve, to become someone else. That's the only thing that you cannot achieve in the world. It's to become someone else. 
And the Yetzirah all of the time is dressing himself in other people and showing to you and telling you only in your mind. He doesn't have no control. He cannot move a finger in this world. He doesn't have permission to touch. The only thing that he's doing is in your mind. Talking bad things on your wife, talking bad things on your husband, saying bad things on your kids, saying bad things on yourself, on your shape, on your beard, on your eyes, on your kippah, on your jacket, on how you look, on how you eat, on how you drink, on how you talk, on how you've been hurt, on how you've been sound, on what people think about you. Thoughts! It's only thoughts! Nothing happened! It might be that everything that you thought is 100% wrong, and the truth is opposite. But you're not going to know. Why? Because you follow the sadness, and you follow the anger, and the frustration, because of your low self-image, your low self-esteem, because you're not focusing into becoming your true self. And then you will find that you are a creation of Hashem, and that Hashem in Barach made you to be exactly like that He wanted you to be. With the same beard, with the same kippah, with the same jacket, with the same weaknesses, with the same ignorance, with the same horrible memory, with the same horrible mistakes, with the same horrible lusts and desires and failures, but handmade of the Creator. So now, if He made me like that I am, means that He had a reason. He knew what He was doing. He still knows exactly what he's doing with me in every second of my life. So what I need to do? I need to connect myself to reality. <coughs> to become you, to become you, to become you, it's impossible for me. But to be my true self, that's supposed to be the mission of my life. That is something that I can achieve. Now, who am I? Great, who am I? Today I'm nervous, today I'm afraid, today I'm scared, today I lost my mind. Who am I? Inside of yourself there is a holy soul. When the person goes to the world to come, after 120 years, so the body stays here, and the souls go up. So who are you? You're the body or the soul? You're the soul. Because when a person goes back to heaven, so the body stays here. It means that you are not your body. You're not your face. You're not your eyes. Your eyes are just a window to your soul. Your body is just a vehicle that moves, transfers your soul from one place to the other because Hashem attached them in a way, in a mysterious way, in a divine way, in a great way. He connected your soul that is a divine soul, part of God, part of heaven, Chelek Eloka Mimaal, and He locked that beam of light of Him, His own light, His way of expressing Himself, of showing Himself. He locked His light into your body, into your box, and now you are trapped. Who are you? You are Him. But you're trapped in your own prison, in your exile. And that's the curse. That's the voice of the snake that is talking and talking and talking to us, negative thoughts, bad thoughts, sad thoughts, angry thoughts, thoughts of despair, no hope, no happiness, no joy, no satisfaction. And we must fight against those negative voices and to follow only the voices that are pushing us to believe in ourselves. To believe that in a place that there is no man, we need to be that man. We need to be that one. That in the place that you now heard that the neighbors are fighting, why Hashem made you hear that fight? Because you have the ability to help. Why Hashem shown to you that poor guy? Because you have the way to help. It doesn't mean you need to give him all of your life savings. You can pray for him. You can give him only $5 or $20. Depends on what you have. But believe in yourself that you're on a mission. And that if Hashem shown you that poor guy, you have something to do with him. Even if it's only to pray for his sake, for his health, for his happiness, for his success. It doesn't matter. You need to check inside what really Hashem wants from me. 
Now, in my house, with my family, in our condition, in this situation, with our difficulties, what in the world Hashem wants from me? For sure to be nice, for sure to smile, for sure to be positive, for sure to support and to love and to like and to give as much as I'm able to, not more than that. Like we said, Yetzirah don't care how to kill the person. He doesn't matter, he doesn't care to make a person lose his mind while trying to keep more than he's able, to do more than he's able to. He doesn't care as long as that person lost his mind in the end and destroyed the family. So he doesn't care. Lose your mind, you're crazy. Okay, religious, from Haredi, Hasid. Okay, another crazy guy. He doesn't care. Even more so, it's great. Take the Torah with you, take your children with you. Oh, you're going to have eight children, no problem. So great, destroy them all at once. He doesn't care. Yatsara is celebrating. It's a great opportunity. Oh, from family. Nice. When we're eating, he doesn't care. He will play the game. The wisdom is to understand Hashem, He loves you. Hashem, He made you. Hashem, He gave you the tools to succeed. He gave you the power and installed inside of you the tools to succeed and to achieve what that you need to achieve. Not that what I need to achieve. You will never going to be me. I'm never going to be you. You just need to find yourself. You just need to find your true self and to believe in yourself and to go with that and to help others to believe in themselves, to find their true selves. Chanoch lanar al pidarko. Educate your children to become themselves, not to get, become like you or like that rabbi or like Rish Lakish or like Rabbi Yochanan. No, he is not Rabbi Yochanan. He is Yonatan. He is Chaim. He, she is Yafa. She is Leah. And that's it. And she needs to be Leah, not Leah Imenu. I once, a friend of mine came to me once, he told me, you know, the kid of that friend of us, he went off the derech, he, he made a haircut and dyed his hair and doing this, doing that. And I asked him, why? He said, you won't believe why. I told him, why? What happened? He said, his parents wanted him to be a Rabbi Vadya Yosef. That was the reason. His parents really wanted him to be Rabbi Vadya Yosef. But he didn't have the vessel, because his parents were not the parents of Rav Ovadia Yosef. That's why their child cannot be Ovadia Yosef. So their will that that child will be the next chief rabbi of the generation. Okay, so you killed him. You killed him. You pushed too much, and that's it, and he lost it. So was it right? No, but we wanted him just to learn to learn. Okay, but it was more than he could take. It was too much for him, so it was not right. You need to sense, you need to check, you need to feel the pulse, you need to feel the energy, you need to feel the vibe, how you're going to do it. If you're not sensitive to who that you are, you can never be sensitive to others. If you want to feel your wife, your, your, your family, your friends, you need to know how to feel. And what you know how to feel yourself. That is your feelings. You feel insulted, you feel hurt, you feel happy, you feel proud. You feel your feelings inside. So when you will develop that awareness to your true feelings, to your true thoughts, to your true existence, to who that you are, you will buy through that the ability to sense other people as well, to feel other people as well, and to help them, and to guide them, and to supply for them the things that are required for them to become themselves. And more than that, we don't need. And more than that, we cannot have it also. There's no way in the world that you can be someone else. If you made plastic surgeries, the only thing that you did was changing yourself, but you will never become the one that you hope to be. It's not, it's just, they cut your nose, okay? So they, they, they cut your cheeks, okay? But it doesn't make you someone else. It's just lost something or gained something, it doesn't matter, I'm not criticizing. It can be good for you. But to think that while doing it, you're going to become something else, that's, that's nonsense. You are who that you are, and you need to be happy with that. And you need to develop a relationship with yourself. And you need to find yourself and to be happy with yourself and to become one with who that you are and to be happy with that. Because who made you? Hashem made you. And he knows, he knows exactly. The nose, he knows, he knows. 
He knows exactly. He knows exactly what is required for you to make you humble, to make you a true believer, to make you honest, to make you sensitive, to make you care about other people, to make you generous, to make you nice. He knows exactly what can build you and what can destroy you. And that's why he is protecting you from giving to you the things that you desire. And he will give you only the things that will build you and not the things that will ruin you. The main thing, the main message that I wanted to pass to you today is to connect yourself to your true self, to accept yourself. And for that you need to have a relationship with yourself. You need to develop a conversation with yourself. You need to learn how to know yourself. And that is coming through that mitzvah of prayer, of tefillah. And I'm talking about mitzvah ta tefillah midoraita, when a person is speaking to Hashem, not by reading from the Siddur, reading from Tehillim. That's another kind of prayer. I'm talking about the individual conversation of yours, sharing your heart and your feelings and your needs and your hopes and your pain with the Creator. Just talking to him like you would talk to a loving father. Share. Tell him, I need your help. I'm kind of lost right now. I don't know what to do. That simple conversation will contain only words of truth that will come out of your mouth. And Hashem is close to everyone that calls him with truth. So those prayers will be answered. If you will come to Hashem from an honest place and going to tell him, Hashem, that's it. I'm finished. I'm done. I need help. From here I cannot continue. I must have a salvation. If that prayer will come from an honest place, sharing your heart, Hashem will answer your prayer. That's that covenant that we spoke about before. When you choose to believe in Hashem and to follow Hashem, Hashem must reveal His loving kindness on you. Loving kindness means mercy. Mercy means to help a person even if he's not worthy. So you don't need to become righteous that Hashem will answer your prayers. You just need to pray from your heart. And then those words will be answered and accepted. Thank you very much. And Hashem bless us all with much happiness and true success. Amen. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.